The state of Sao Paulo is one of Brazil's wealthiest and is among the world's most populous states. Sao Paulo is the 19th richest city in the world and it has an abundant cultural institutions and a rich architectural tradition. It is also one of the biggest financial centers in Brazil. Sao Paulo's economy is going through a deep transformation. Stabilization Wedge To emphasize the need for early action, co-directors Robert Zucolo and Stephen Picard created the concept of stabilization wedges. 25 billion ton wedges that need to be cut out of predicted future carbon emissions in the next 50 years to avoid doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide over pre-industrial levels. Carbon emissions from the fossil fuel burning are projected to double in the next 50 years, keeping the world on course to more than triple the atmosphere's carbon dioxide concentration from its pre-industrial level. This path is predicted to lead to significant global warming by the end of the century, along with the decreased crop yields, increased threats to human health, and more frequent extreme weather events. A combination of strategies will be needed to build the eight wedges of the stabilization triangle that has the potential to reduce global warming emissions by at least 1 billion tons per year by 2016, or one wedge. Deforestation. Sao Paulo has 17.5% of its territory covered by rainforest, with net area increase. As deforestation in the Amazon continues, rainfall in the southern part of Brazil will continue to be affected. The Amazonian forest will continue to lose its ability to regulate the climate and ensure a flow of water to the southeastern part of the country. There appear to be two options for wise action. On the one hand, politicians can decide to stop the problem at its root cause by decreasing Amazonian deforestation and promoting rehabilitation of degraded forest in order to maintain the atmospheric circulation patterns. A second possibility is to integrate expected shortfalls of rainfall into planning and adapt the economic systems of the South to accommodate more frequent droughts. Changes to agricultural practice and forestry management could cut greenhouse gas emissions, buying time to develop alternative technologies. Energy. Brazil already has made significant strides in curbing its greenhouse gas emissions particularly by dramatically reducing deforestation by 75% in the last decade, compared to the decade before. Renewable energy makes up around 40% of Brazil's total energy mix, prompting some criticism. The new plan isn't ambitious enough, but with the in-economy in dire strain, the time is ripe for investing in clean energy industries that can create jobs in the country and help meet emissions targets at the same time. Boosting clean energy, especially the wind and solar industries, could be a way for the government to create jobs and revive some growth. Brazil is a fast country of abundant natural resources and Brazilians are anxious both to preserve irreplaceable habitats and fulfill their potential to contribute significantly to global energy and food supply. Hydroelectric power plants produce almost 80% of the electrical energy consumed in Brazil. They depend on river waters in adequate levels in their ponds to generate energy. Lack of rainfall, investments and increased consumption resulted in electrical energy rationalization. 
Biomass is a clean energy source used in Brazil. It reduces environmental pollution as it uses organic garbage, agricultural remains, or wood shaving. Transport. Transport in Sao Paulo plays a key role in the day-to-day -day life of the people of Sao Paulo. Although lacking in strong infrastructure, various methods of public transport are offered, including a complex bus system. Improving public transport will increase the number of people that will use public transport, which will in turn decrease carbon emissions. Good public transport systems are an essential part of safe, clean and affordable transport for development. Most cars on the road today in Brazil can run on blends of up to 25% ethanol and motor vehicle manufacturers already produce vehicles designed to run on much higher ethanol blends. Most car makers in Brazil sell flexible fuel cars trucks and minivans that can use gasoline and ethanol blends ranging from poor gasoline up to a hundred percent ethanol there are many ways to waste food throwing leftovers in the trash losses during transportation and distribution of the products or perishable goods that spoil without ever leaving the supermarket the combination of the above leads to a shocking amount of food being literally disposed every day. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States estimates that one third of the total global food production is wasted. A few viable options that could work in this sense are already being used, while others are still lacking implementation some examples are improvement of the pre and post harvest treatments of fruit and vegetables standardization of the packaging dimensions improvement in transportation of food better communication between producers retailers wholesalers and consumers investment in cold chains to store products for longer periods, strengthening of awareness campaigns to encourage the reduction of organic waste and reuse of some products or food parts. Entities estimate that 80% of the waste generated in residences is food related. Yet recycling of organic waste is not so widely known as the one related to glass, paper, plastic, and aluminium. The collection of organic litter itself is more complicated. Unlike other materials, food waste cannot be stored for long periods. Since it starts to smell, allow the proliferation of bacteria, and also attract insects and rats. In Brazil, most food collected from residences, factories, and commercial facilities is sent to landfills. This solution might lead to unwanted environmental consequences, as leachate and other remains may pollute the soil and water. On the other hand, some landfills have a system capable of transforming organic waste into energy.